me to define what burning velocity is. If we have, let's say, this scenario where we have an unburned mixture going into a flame and then combustion product coming out behind the flame, we can define the burning velocity as the velocity at which the unburned mixture enters a flame zone in the direction normal to the flame. So basically the velocity at which an unburned mixture is entering the flame. So this holds even if uh, this holds where you're sit you're basically sitting on the flame. So the, the burning velocity is a constant where your flame speed is not necessarily a constant. So we can measure the laminar burning velocity or the burning velocity using a Bunsen burner where we have some velocity U coming out of the of the Bunsen burner and a flame sitting on top of the burner itself. So if we measure the half angle, we call that theta, we can look at the we can look at the direction normal to the flame, call that the laminar burning velocity, and then define the laminar burning velocity as the bulk flow velocity times the sine of theta. Very straightforward, simple geometry. And then for a turbulent flame, which we're going to talk about a little bit more in a minute, it is easier to define using a little bit of, of, of geometry, it's easier to find the burning velocity as the volumetric flow rate in meters cubed per second divided by the area of the flame, because it's harder to find what the flame edge angle is when the flame becomes highly wrinkled. Uh, so this is an example of turbulent burning velocity versus a turbulent flame versus a laminar flame, where we can see the laminar flame is very very constant over time. This is taken at 300 frames per second so that you can see a little bit of the movement. So this is about uh, 15 times slower than, than real time. And you can see the turbulent flame moving around significantly. So in this, in this case, the laminar case, we have a constant velocity coming out of the, the, the burner itself. And in the turbulent case, we have some average velocity plus a fluctuating component. So these, this is a key thing to pay attention to. So if we look at terminal intensity, we'll define that as uh, U prime RMS. We can talk about a Reynolds decomposition of your flow velocity where you have, like we said before, the, the average mean velocity plus the fluctuating component. And then we can define the terminal intensity as the root mean square of the fluctuating term. So that's fairly straightforward, a simple statistical calculation. But all right, we want to define what the integral length scale is. It's the mean size of large eddies in a turbulent, in, in a turbulent flow. It's a simple definition. For the purposes of this talk, we'll go with that. And it can be calculated using this equation, where we look at the mean bulk flow velocity, and we do the autocorrelation of the, of the flow velocity. So including the fluctuation term, autocorrelation is uh, another statistical method that I'm not going to go into here. But if you want to talk about 